<laughs> but here we are on the, on the second of the Cornerstone's mindset attitude. In the last, in the first part, part two of mindset attitude, we talked about attitude serves your mindset. Good habits lead to better results. So starting getting good habits. Using short feedback loops to build motivation to track your goals, enjoy some successes. If you do those things, if you follow and understand how that helped you get to where you're going, your attitude and your mindset will improve. It gives us to part three, which is very similar to first two parts. It's our third brick. This is basically says still attitude is so important in your mindset. So you gotta have a good positive attitude. You have to stay away from the negative Nellies and all the people who don't keep you up and lift it. You have to worry about sick, all these things, fears. We all talked about how fears run our emotions, our emotions run our habits, so then all of a sudden we're in a bad habit because we're feeling bad. We have a bad emotional, we're in a bad space. So all these things can affect your motivation through your attitude. So we get to brick three, motivation and attitude, or that was brick one. Brick two is the behaviors, routines, habits, and we're gonna briefly go over that again, just as a review. Because those are the first two parts of that cornerstone. Having a good attitude keeps you motivated. Understanding your behaviors, your routines, your habits, and your rituals, and then manipulating them for the positive will improve your life tremendously. Some of the handouts we talked and I, and I sent out was the weekly habits, routines, rituals, worksheet that you may have, and we'll go over that. Uh, the habit tracker worksheets and your mindset mastery plan. These are the three documents that you'll get again and again and again because you lose. So, so and I, the reason I talk about this is because I use this as a simple way to keep track to make sure every week I do something along all the cornerstones. Self-care Sundays, stress-free Sunday, self-care. So that's the day of the week that I focus more on taking care of myself. Don't have to work normally. Hopefully not playing too much softball or anything. For so I can de-stress, relax, and take care of myself. So that I, then on Monday, Mindset or Motivational Mondays, that's when I review something that keeps me motivated. I look at a story. I go online. I find something that keeps me motivated in my lifestyle. Team Building Tuesdays, we'll talk about that, having your, your team, your, your team that helps you out. Workout Wednesdays, Wednesday workouts I normally throw, so I'm a little twist in my workout. Keeping it fresh, keeping it different. Tech, it tech Teach and Transformation Thursdays. I teach classes five days a week, so it's not just Thursday, but Thursday is when I teach people what single thing you can do if you're in one of my classes on Thursday, which is not here, unfortunately, um, what thing you can do to transform your life the best? And, and there's so many things out there. I'll share a story with somebody. I'll, share, I'll, I'll pull out some of the stories we've went in this class about some of the people and how the transformation they went through is repeatable by anybody if you put the effort in it. F Friday, Food Fridays. Fridays, I'm, I'm worrying about my next week's menu. I'm getting together. Okay, what am I going to eat next week? I got to plan ahead. I got to get my grocery list together. So food Friday, then maybe a day where I'm doing some long-term freezer, freezer meals or pre-cooking some meals and service to others on Saturdays. Volunteer, I give my time away when I'm not playing softball, is I'll, I'll go to senior apartments and offer to teach a fitness class. I do it around this area, around other areas that I've set up with. And so I can get to give back to people and I do that on Saturdays. It can maybe volunteering at an event, going to help somebody with a 10K, set stuff up, just service to others. So these routines, rituals, and habits, I created this list to show you that Sunday's an important day. And for me, that's the way I do it. You can do it any different way you want. It's just as long as you have an idea. I have this on a big whiteboard in my fitness room on Sunday, all the way down. I write down what I'm gonna do just keeps me fresh in my mind because I'm one of those people see something say something write something teach something you got to do all to learn it and I need all all four of those methods for that I really get a handle on it we talked about the habit trackers how do you create those habits 
And this is just a simple ha habit tracker, which we had, we talked about drinking water. So like here, drinking water, 31 days, did you drink, did you meet your daily quota of water? Check it off. By the end of the month, I guarantee you, you're gonna make that habit pretty straight. You may find out, not so much the first couple of days and more and more the second week, more and more the third week, because it's on your mind more. You know, hey, I have to, I have to, I have to get my um, allotment of water in. It could be not having any soda. So you check it off. You had water, not soda. You know, it could be eating a more nutritious breakfast. You know, all these are different habits and you can write whatever you want and track them for a course of a month to see how you're doing. It's pretty important. And we talked about when I gave everybody this mindset mastery plan. Oh, we have plans for everything. You know, we got a plan so we don't fail. Plan to win. If you don't plan, you're gonna fail. So again, this is just a simple form. If you don't have a copy, I'm sure I'll be emailing it to you again uh, to help you build a mindset mastery plan. You know, what do you want to accomplish it? What do I want to do? How will I accomplish it? Do the self-discovery exercises that we went over to show you what your goals are. What are your long-term dreams, lessons learned for your life so far? You fill this thing out every year and you're going to get a good idea of how you can help stay motivated because you know what you want. You know what your goals are. You can pick this piece of paper up. It could be on both sides and review it in a matter of 30 seconds and, and keep yourself on plan. So brick three, self-care. Brick four is that team, personal support team that, we, that I showed there. I just labeled it a little bit different. So these are the remaining two blocks for attitude mindset. So self-care, what is it? What do we do now in our life to keep ourselves healthier? There's, there's different, I've seen wheels like this with eight and 10 different types of self-care. Is there emotional self-care, physical, practical? That's how you get about doing your daily work, mental, social. These are all different areas that you need to focus on or at least pay attention to every now and then to keep you balanced. This is a little wheel, a self-care wheel, as you can see. Physical, have a massage, take some time off, radical med regular medical care, get sleep and movement. So these types of wheels like this, you can just take a quick look at, and they come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors to see that these are our emotional or areas, spiritual, personal areas that you can just take time to think about, to take care of yourself and your whole being. Here's a checklist we found. And I find so much stuff is available on you. Just go on to Google, put it in there, self-care. You'd be surprised what you're going to see come up. That's where I got this list off the other day. Here's just a little checklist. Do something for yourself. Maybe it's a Sunday, you pick this, chest, this sheet up, what can I do? Go for a walk. You're doing that every day, so you don't need to do that on Sunday. Uh, go to lunch with friends. Take some personal time. Take yourself out for coffee and a muffin. Whatever it is, something that gets joy for you to help you de-stress. Get a new pillow. Sit in the sun. I'm a big fan of sitting in the sun. Try an adult coloring book. I know they have classes here. I've seen them. They're in there painting. What's the difference? It's just something to keep your mind off the stresses in your life. Focus on something you maybe like to do. Have a dance party. Read a book. There's so many things you can do on a self-care day to help take care of yourself. And it doesn't have to be Every day, you could pick one of these things out every day of the week. Because if this ain't enough, here's 30 self-care ideas, one for each day of the week of the month. Make a list of positive things in life. Drink six, eight glasses of water. Listen to a new podcast. We'll get to that. Very informative out there. So here's 30 simple ideas. And if that ain't enough, you can blow it up. Here's 101 ideas for simple self-care. So there's a lot of things you can do to take care of yourself emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is. There's all kinds of things out there at your fingertips. Here's a little self-care plan. Piece of paper, write it down. What am I gonna do for my mind, my body, my spirit? Supportive people in my life. Again, I'm not showing the negative people because we only wanna put the supportive people in I want to accomplish. A simple little thing you can pull out, fill it out every now and then to so keep yourself in tune with your whole, your whole self-care. Here's one I like, I especially like this one for two weeks, physical self-care activities. Take a walk, 
stretch or yoga, eat fruits and vegetables. Shower and comb your hair, well, I don't have that much problem anymore. So this is just a simple idea. Check it off, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for one week, for the second week. Just, just something to refresh your memory. Mental self-care activities. Take all your medications, meditate for five minutes. Big fan of meditation, just sitting and relaxing. Write down your goals, write in a journal. People who journal have happier, healthier lives because they're in tune with more of what's going on in their life. Download a mental health app on your phone. I got enough of those. I know there's a lot of them out there. Do some deep breathing. I'm, I'm a big fan of deep breathing. Take my classes. You do a lot of breathing exercise, a lot of breathing work. So these are just some mental self-care activities. Emotional self-care activities. Call or text or email a friend. A couple years back, I, I picked up on Sunday, on my self-care day, I call a friend and I haven't seen in, in a long time. I just get a phone call, reach out, touch base with them. And then you find out, you know, hey, we're thinking about you. You bring up old times. Guess what? Your mood goes up because you're reliving all those old good times that you had with the people. Your attitude goes way sky high. It's a simple thing to do. I try to do it every Sunday. Listen to an interesting podcast episode. Listen to music. Again, all these kind of things are emotional self-care activities. Podcast. Highly recommend this podcast, a slightly change of plan. It's available on all the podcast platforms. Maya Shankar, she was a classical violinist. She went to school, got herself involved in self-help, self-care. And it's a very uplifting podcast. They come out once a week, and it's usually about 15 to 20 minutes. And she'll share a story with someone who changed their life. Their life took a slight change. They didn't. They were maybe looking to do this. This happened in their life. They were steered another way. Very uplifting stories. Learn a lot about yourself by listening to how other people dealt with certain tragedies, changes in their lives, total refocusing of what they did. And for the most part, all the stories have positive endings because people have a more positive attitude. And they've learned that if you have a change or something really affects your life and you take the, the bad road, you go down the dark side, you never have a good outcome. If you learn from it, move yourself ahead and know that it's just an opportunity. You could change, slight change in your plans and create a new life for you. So very interesting uh, podcast. Another one for you women, Self-Care Simplify with Megan Dahlman. She covers everything female as far as all your hormones. You'd be surprised. You've never heard that how your shampoos can affect your mood and your attitude because of the chemicals, this and that, and shampoos, skin oils, treatments, all these kind of things. She goes into all these things, talks about hormones. Ladies, you have to, if you don't have a track of your hormones, you don't know what's going on with yourself. And how many people, when I talk about it on the foundation, I said, know your numbers, get that blood work done, talk to your doctor, find out how your hormones are. Great podcast. They're usually half hour podcasts. They come out periodically. Just an example of something you can do to help yourself get your mood increased, watching a simple podcast. And this one I've, I've, listen to quite a few of hers because they're all posted you can see what the topic is oh that's interest me i'll listen to that one do it on your phone do it when you're taking your daily walk walking the dog whatever you're doing listen to a podcast if you can listen to 15 20 minute 30 minute podcast every day i'm telling you you're gonna, you're gonna improve your life tremendously and there's so many free ones out there that are very good gets us to self-care we have an idea Everybody kind of understands what we're talking about when we say self-care. Take time to take care of yourself in any of the ways that was just showed about. And to how you can do it and help yourself is staffing yourself, surrounding yourself with a personal support team. People who are looking out for you, working for you, not working for themselves. And it doesn't have to be an expensive relationship with anybody. As we'll go over, there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of locations, a lot of places where it's good to have help. 
I used to fill out my tax return. I don't anymore. Too complicated. Who knows the tax code like they we used to be so simple until they come with it a, to the one sheet, you know, postcard, you know, flat tax or something. I leave it to the professional. It's the same type of thing with a lot of areas in your life. Auto mechanics. You know, they you you can't even find one anymore. Old school auto mechanics because they can't work on this stuff. These cars are so complicated and they're so non traditional per se in the old school ways that I can't even work on my car anymore. I, I can change the oil and the brake pads. That's about it. Maybe the windshield wipers, you know, and if it's something simple. But other than that, you don't know how these cars work anymore. So it's just finding personal support team to help you out. So you have just fitness. Know, I'm sorry to yeah. yeah. But our does it for free, um, um, you know, during like a couple of months before they do it for tax free. returns. Tax yeah. returns. If it's a simple tax return, they'll do it. Again, so. using a professional. And they're very good. And now you can do, and that my daughter does this. She does the H and R Block online. They have it online, mm -hmm. and it's just she, she's got a simple, turbo, simple thing. Yeah, gas. but she does the H and R Block one online. And I used to have to take her all her stuff, get it all done. She's in her forties now. It's about time she take care of this stuff. She's now she takes care of her own taxes. Less things I got to worry about, there right? You go. So. Personal support team, these are things I recommend. Fitness professional, medical professional, doctors, those type, nutritional professional, a mentor, coach, somebody to help you, and a good circle of friends. If you have some or all of these people that are there for you, you're gonna have a more stable life. You're gonna have more balance in your life across the board. Fitness professional, personal trainer, a fitness instructor or a fitness coach, what do you need? Most people don't need all three of those. For the most part, if you have a good fitness coach, you don't need a personal trainer. Or if you take a class, that's your typical instructor who's just gonna instruct you how to exercise. I'm not gonna go in depth as a personal trainer would. I like to, I like to focus on having yourself a good coach. Somebody that's gonna help you help yourself. A personal trainer is gonna tell you what to do, do it. You know, that's just the whoers, or, you know, the whoers, the doers, the doers, howers, and wires. I'm really my own new notes. The doers are just do what they're told to do. Go to an exercise class, do it. The fitness instructor, person trainer says, do this, and you do it. You don't care why. You don't care how it helps you. So that's a certain type of people that can get a buy with certain things. If you have somebody who's more in tune with what their health is, a fitness coach is somebody that can really hone in and, and keep your progress on track, to keep you as healthy as possible in the fitness corner of our house, keeping it in line. Medical professional, <coughs> personal physician, a physical therapist, and a massage therapist. I needed one the other day after nine softball games. Let me tell you, I was sore as can be. I had one of those percussion things that they are all in the rage now, the little gun type things that massage your muscles. Uh, have one of those, help out a lot to help loosen up your muscles when they're stiff and sore. So we all have a personal physician, or we should, you know. Physical therapist, if you had an injury, they've introduced you to those fine people, the physical yeah. therapists, right? And who hasn't had a physical therapy session in their life? Then they need one because there's some good information that can get you and provide for you uh, to keep you physically in good shape and medically. Personal physicians, I personally don't ask my doctor about my fitness. He's a medical doctor. He's treat, trained to treat illness. That's what they are. Physical therapists trained to treat injuries, not to help you get healthier. Massage therapists, help you feel better, relax, such as so. But they're not instructing you. Just think about the whole purpose of your medical team is a support of nature. You need to have one on hand, or at least to have one readily available through your healthcare system. Most systems will let you talk to a physical therapist department for nothing if you call your medical doctor without an appointment, especially nowadays with the facial things, the, the visits that are what do you call it? Visual. Visual visits, yes. 
back in the old days when I was a fireman driving a big red truck down the road, they had talked about having these computers on the on the rescue squads and have the doctors oversee what you're doing. They have them now. Rescue squads have cameras in the back and they have iPads and they're talking to the doctor sees you. So instead of, we used to pick up Rampart, remember the old Adam 12, one Adam 12, called Rampart, you know, and get medical instructions. You click a button, all of a sudden there's a doctor on your screen looking at you and he's got a camera looking at the patient. Wow. Simple technology has come a long way in helping. And there's a lot of things available on that path that weren't in the past that can be really helpful. Nutritional professionals, nut certified nutritionists, a professional chef, they're all over TV, right? Food delivery services, online nutritional programs, food prep clubs or groups. And we talked about that in the nutrition the first time through, and we'll get to more of that when we get to that. But these are professionals that you can use as needed. We all don't need a certified nutritionist all the time, but if you got a medical condition, you're trying to holistically fix yourself, it starts there with nutrition. We are what we eat, and we become unbalanced if we eat the wrong foods for our system, for our metabolism, for our chemistry. Certified nutritionists can help steer you in the right direction. Knowing a professional chef, getting tips from them how to prepare foods better. Key, and watch the nutritional channels. They always have those good programs on when they're talking about food prep ideas and stuff like this. Good time to watch those. Food delivery services, now you can make a phone call, get a box delivered to your house once a week with all your meals in it. Instructions how to make this or that. My daughter uses it because you're busy all the time and she gets this box. I can't remember what her service is called. She gets all these food pre-packed, she's got to cook it. She doesn't have to worry about it, you know, and they're pretty balanced meals. Online programs, uh, online nutrition programs. There are groups out there, Facebook groups, there's other groups from all across the internet uh, where you can participate and watch live food demonstrations. If you have a camera or anything on your computer, they can watch you too, but if not, there's, there's one and two way systems, online programs to help with nutrition, getting people the skills they need to cook healthier, to live healthier. The food prep clubs. Now, I was a big fan of this. I started it down the street in Twinsburg at a senior center where we got seven ladies together. I was looking for seven and they are a food prep club. Oh. So they come down to their common area in, in the senior apartment complex. They have a kitchen, most of them. And on Sundays, they make foods for all of them. They all have one meal. They make enough for seven people. And so then they just switch, and switch their foods. So they make a different meal. Some people are special in Italian food or this or that. But the thing is that they get a group of people together that have better skills maybe that they have. They have better variety in their diet. And you get to try things out. And you go down there one night, you get seven days of, of meals prepared for you and packaged up, put them in your fridge, wow. freezer. So it's something you can, you have available and, or could be started even here. I don't know if they have one of those things here. I should ask Jenna if they do, but that's something they should have. Yeah. Uh, I got into this freezer meal club where it's all freezer meals. In other words, you don't pre-cook them. You put everything in these gallon Ziploc bags, seven bags, seven meals. So I go to the store and buy all this stuff, cut up chicken, put them in three, cut up some beef, tips. You put all your protein, all your carbs, everything, you put it in, the, in your freezer. So it's prepared but not cooked. So then come day to, ah, I'm going to have this day. We used it when we were camping two weeks ago. Pull the freezer meal out. It was like a goulash type thing. Put it in a, a crock pot or a whatever steamer you have. All the different kind of tools that are out there now. And cook it up. You know, it's all prepared, so you don't have to worry about it. I'm prepared foods, freezer meals. They last for months, you know. It's, it's uncooked. And I was surprised that pretty good. And it's just a club that I belong to, so I've got hundreds of different recipes that I could choose from breakfasts, lunches, and dinners in these freezer bags. They're thick freezer bags. You can reuse them. You know, it's pretty cool. So that was something I got into to help. And now that we're doing more camping and traveling around, and I can have good, healthy, prepared foods that we can heat up and not have to worry about what we're going to eat. Neat. Pretty cool. 
personal support team, a mentor, a coach, somebody you look up to. A fit could be a family member, could be a spiritual leader, a close friend of one of your idols. You know, somebody, I have idols. I had Jack Lane was an idol of mine as a kid, and I got to meet him, got to interact with him in his, before he passed years ago, and uh, learned a lot from picking somebody's brain. Uh, so having a mentor, somebody that's guiding you along the way, uh, is, is priceless for your health. So that's a personal support team. You know, uh, it could be a, one close friend. It could be a couple friends that you have a walking group, circle of friends, a confidant, one of your best friends, a walking group, a fitness class, people in a group setting that you can all sit down and, and support each other. I mean, all my fitness classes, people know each other, they talk to each other, they're friends, you know, they're, it, it becomes part of their life. It's something they can reach out to. Starting a walking group. I know they have them here. I see the ladies out walking around the track here uh, all, all the time. It's a good thing to, to get involved with. It could be you're only walking 100 feet. You know, that's all you can manage, whatever. It could be you're walking, you know, two miles, three miles. But getting somebody like that at support team is priceless in, in helping you keep yourself on the track, going towards your goals, getting you to where you want to be. Fitness classes, one class leads to another. I had people in my class here that came from Beechwood, people in Beechwood that came from here, Twinsburg, over there, Macedonia. So people find about, if, they find, if you find a good instructor, follow them, try a different fitness class if you can. Pretty, pretty simple questions about it, about this topic, self-care. I sent out an email, y'all got, who were pre-registered for the class. You were on the list, but if I get your email, then I will have it. Who's on the list? Here's, okay, I did write, I did write down. Um, <coughs> here's 40 self-care printable, different things. There's something that I, uh, through uh, psychology today, or positivepsychology.com, they have a lot of resources about like, doing a self-meditation class yourself. Maybe two people get together and do a meditation class. Simple things that you can do to keep you keep your motivated. Um, calm is a good app. Calm? Meditation. Yes, Calm is good. There, there's so many apps uh, out there. But these, this, like this program has some worksheets that you can just walk yourself through by yourself what they're trying, what you're trying to accomplish. So if you know what you're trying to accomplish out of a session, you get more out of it than just going in blindly and saying, you know, what's this class about? You know, if you knew what it's about and it interests you, you're going to get more out of it. So they have a lot of uh, scripts that you can follow through: mindfulness scripts, self-meditation scripts, um, to, again to help you with your self-care, help you with taking care of all those areas in your life that you need to take care of. Pretty interesting. I'll send you a patch, an email link to this, this company, it's really good. Again, if you just go to, type in your, your browser, I use Google Chrome, self-care. There was a, a stream of information that came up, go to images, there's all those posters and stuff I get off of there. There's tons of stuff out there on the internet. If you spend just a few minutes reaching out and looking to see what's available. Um, so that's really self-care. Any questions on that? I mean, something that I maybe can answer for you? I don't have the lottery numbers. I need them. That would help us all if we had those lottery numbers. At least five of them, then we can win. Um, as far as personal support team, just take time to think about who can you, who can you, you know, reach out to, to help you balance your life out. Because we're all gonna find ourselves stressed out. We're all gonna find ourselves working too hard. You're physically tired, you're mentally tired. You know, your nutrition's out of whack. You know, you're under a lot of stress. How can we help balance our life out? And a lot of times just picking up your phone, calling someone and having a, a short conversation with a close friend or a, 
a mentor or someone who has a better, you feel has a better handle on that aspect of your life than you could, and you can use them. So it, it's, it's a pretty good resource to think about. I mean, it's not as important as bricks one and two on this, obviously, but it's pretty darn important to take care of yourself, putting self-care in your weekly schedule, using professionals when you can. Uh, you can ask me any question you ever want about coaching, about fitness, because that's my specialty. I'm not going to give you nutritional information. I'll steer you the right direction for nutritionists, for nutritional help, or type of the programs that I use. Um, but it, it's relying on the right people to do the right job for you is, is the key to, to keeping yourself, you know, from following the latest fads, from following the latest clickbaits on the computers and this and that. Uh -huh. Motivation. That's oh, the key. That's it's the great to have if you're not motivated to use it, right? right? And if you don't understand how to use it, your mindset, I don't know, I'm not going to use that thing, you know? So it all kind of kind of can work together. Uh, and treat, treat yourself as a whole rather than as individual components. Like I said, this, this program might set it up this way to try to simplify the areas in life without getting too complicated. Um, and when we're all done, you'll get a nice sheet of paper, sort of like what Kim has the one with all the, the handouts. It'll be, you know, nutrition. Boom, 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 four items, the four cornerstones. And then underneath those four cornerstones, you could have a substone, something that you could add in, because there's other things you can do in nutrition other than the four things I've told you. There's other things you can do in fitness uh, than I've told you. We haven't really got into stretching you know, as much as I wanted to in the fitness component because it just, it's an extra. It's something that's important. There's other bricks to help build these walls up in our, in our castle, our home castle. Uh, but you gotta set that foundation, knowing who you are, knowing your numbers, learning about your history, your past, knowing what's around the corner for you genetically. Uh, do you have longevity in your family or do you don't? All these things are good for setting that foundation. Before you start putting those cornerstones in place, start your fitness program. Get your mindset in line. Eat better. Get rid of stress. And slowly build your castle up as you do that. Keeping it balanced so we're not top-heavy on one side. Because that's your favorite. Maybe it's not fitness, so you're more concerned about nutrition or, you know, stress. And you find yourself putting not enough effort in an area that's going to keep you balanced. So... The habit tracker form that you had handed out several months ago, that's been a huge help. And I actually um, will highlight the day, mm -hmm. you know, like if I actually did it or not. Yeah. And I can tell, like, when there's lulls that it's like I've either been too busy or there's been a family issue going on or whatever where it's like, okay, that – stretches and highlighted, let's get back into, you know, looking at it. Every and it, it's good to not to have them in a binder sitting on a shelf. No, it's next to my bed. I have mine in my, in my fitness office. I actually have those whiteboards, and I have things written out on the whiteboards. So I walk in there every day when I'm taking the dog out to walk in the morning, and I see what's on my schedule for the day. And at the end of the day, when it's at nighttime, okay, I'm just going to erase that, you know, and put something else up as I'm planning for the next day. If you plan for tomorrow, you're going to be more apt to do it than if you wake up and say, what should I do today? You know, set your plan, set your plan. So you setting know, your pattern, your habits up is so important to keep your mindset. So get those good, healthy habits. Get the habit trackers out. You know, go through the material that we, we had on it. Go through the videos that are of this class, um, even the Zoom videos we did. There are, they've been captured and they're on there as well. So we only have you know a few more classes left on this because the next class is October 9th. And that's going to be on nutrition. It's going to be nutritional professionals, more on that with some names and local people, and more back on the meal plans, labels, and shopping. So reading the label. Yes, they're all going to be live, not on Zoom. Uh, I did, as I have on here, I put on here, 
a Zoom question and answer session. If anybody wants to have a personal or a small group Zoom session between this class and the next class, send me an email. I'll go to my website, click the schedule a call, and we can schedule, you can schedule a phone call. If you have personal questions towards yourself that you want to, you want to maybe pick my brain on, I'd be more than happy to do that in between. So then we have um, stress management, more on triggers and tools, more tools to help m relieve stress. Don't let it overwhelm us. And to overall, assess your overall state of life and health. There are certain markers that there's probably 10, uh, but I like to focus on three or four markers that if you could think of in a positive effect, you're gonna have a positive life, you know? Do you have a good relationship with your life? You know, that's a big thing. People say, what is that? Are you happy with your life? You know, are you a more upbeat person? People are more upbeat, have a better outcome in life. You know, that to me is a key thing. People are always, oh, woe is me, life is bad. You're not gonna get out of that fog unless you take door and close it behind you and say, I'm going to be a different person. So different types of markers, you know, there's health markers, you know, knowing your numbers, your cholesterol, these are kind of things, knowing your family history that are going to tell you if you're going to have a longer health span than your short health span, long lifespan. And it goes, we had that video or that graph I had on the board last time we have our our natural decline in life, our natural decline in our capabilities. And you want that health span to be as long as you can. You want to go out long and then boom, drop off rather than this, oh, there's this one too, you know, the reverse, where you start declining early in life and you linger on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Nobody wants that. We want to live long and healthy until our body and organs say that's enough and go. You do certain things, certain markers give people a better chance to have that. And it's just something that, uh, and, that and again, that's part of the last section is, is the, uh, which is actually module six, which is lifestyle maintenance. So we're gonna get through the four modules. We had the foundation, we had the four cornerstones, and we're gonna have lifestyle maintenance. Now, what do you do after this class with all this information? Mm -hmm. What are the things you need to do, the five or six things you need to do, one in each of these sections on a regular basis uh, in the future and set yourself up that you can continue it in the future so you're not just quitting, you know? It, it, it's, it's a key. Maintenance is more important. It's easy to lose weight, folks. I've done it many times. It's harder to stay at a number. You know, we all have this, I want to be this or I want to be that. And it's harder to do that than it is to, to get to that weight because you don't know how to maintain it, you know. It's just like your fitness. You can work out really hard, get exercise and all you want, get yourself in better shape. So, okay, I'm done now. And you sit back and give up and your conditioning goes right through the floor. So it's being able to maintain it is the important part. So lifestyle maintenance is the key to this program. All this stuff is just getting you the knowledge, getting you the tools to, to help build a healthier lifestyle. And then now how do we maintain it when the class is over with? What are you gonna do? You know, we all have different ways that we do things, you know, and that's what it's all about. Maintenance, get a healthy life and maintain it for as long as you want. Maybe longer, maybe longer. <laughs> But be happy. Find the joy in life and be happy. Nothing else? All right. As Spock would say, live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> Disperse. <laughs>